Okay, this is in Connexus, this is lesson six and lesson seven, um, Pythagorean theorem. In the book, this is just one lesson. So uh, I'm gonna treat this as one lesson. On Monday, we do have a quiz covering five, six, and seven, which is um, exponents uh, and then Pythagorean theorem. Connexus made had a part one, part two. I'm just putting those in one lesson here. So a square root is the opposite operation of what exponent? So when we think about square root, we're thinking about what exponent? What is it the opposite of? What does it undo? Yes. It un un yes, uh, an exponent of 2. Exponent of 2. Uh, sometimes we say second power. Sometimes we say square. Okay, simplify each square root. And so um, I want you to do more than just knowing these square roots. I want you to understand why they, the result is what it is. Who's got number two? Leah? It is 10, but remember, we can think about this as 100 can be written with the power of two. How can I rewrite 100 as, as a power of two? Right, 100 is the same as 10 to the second power. And remember, Square root and second power, they cancel each other out. They make, it, they make basically each other go away. And so that's why we're left with 10. Later this year, you'll, it'll make more sense to you. Okay, there's some other things we haven't gotten to yet, and this will make more sense then. Go ahead, McKinley, number three. Right, so we can rewrite square root of 81 as 9 to the second power. And what does that simplify to, the square root of 9 to the second power? What's that? No, 9 to the second power, you can simplify 9 to the second power as 81, but we don't want to do that. We don't want to go backwards. We want to go to the final result, and we want to cancel out. What can we cancel out? Not the 9 and 2, the square root and the square unit. So we're left with just 9. Does that make sense? So the square root and the second power, they make each other go away. Okay. Now, who's got the next one? Yes. Yes. So we can rewrite this as the square root of 15 to the second power. And then the final result is, is 15. Very good. Okay. And then for number, 100, uh, for number 5, Square root of 121, yep. Right, very good. That's the square root of 11 to the second power. And we see that the square root of 11 to a second power simplifies to just 11. OK, any questions about the warm up? So I try to give you a little bit more background knowledge than what the book had. So I've been trying to get you guys familiar with this over the past few days. So this seems to be a challenge for some students to make the jump. So I'm going to go and read uh, the introduction to the lesson. What you'll learn to use Pythagorean theorem to solve real world problems. New vocabulary, legs, hypotenuse, Pythagorean theorem. Why learn this? The length of the sides of a right triangle are related. When you understand the Pythagorean theorem, you can use right triangles to find unknown distances. In a right triangle, the two shortest sides are called the legs. The, two, the side opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. OK, so students tend to confuse what sides of a right triangle are the legs and what side is the hypotenuse. So let me give you a trick that I've used over the years to help my students out, and it seems to work. So let's talk about the Pythagorean theorem first. It says, the Pythagorean theorem states that any right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs, OK, so if you take the legs and you square them and you add them together, that equals the square of the hypotenuse. So let me explain what that means. First, we need to know what the legs are. So first, the legs. are the sides that form the right angle. And what letter does that look like? An L. 
So remember this. The legs form the right angle. OK? Good way to remember it, right? Entirely speaking. Christian, uh, he's not in this cohort. 7-3. I have 7-1 right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who? Wait, wait, who are you looking for? Um, no, she's actually with Mr. Harris for math. Mm -hmm. No problem. Mm -hmm. Bye. OK, so um, the hypotenuse is the side that is opposite the right angle. Does that make sense? So it's the side that's not the L. Got it? If you can't identify the parts of the triangle correctly, then you're going to have a hard time solving a Pythagorean theorem problem. OK? So let me explain what's going on here. This is how the book shows it to you. Now I've color coded the pieces. Does that make sense? A and B are the legs. C is the hypotenuse. OK? Some books rearrange those letters, but it's the same idea. OK, now we're going to use this to solve a problem. Um, I didn't think this was a very good example, so we're going to go ahead and skip to this problem because we were short on time in the morning. So I want to make sure we have enough time to get through some, ex some examples that I think would be more useful for you. OK, find the length of the hypotenuse in the triangle at the right. OK, so we have this triangle. We need to find the length of the hypotenuse. So I need you to set up the equation. If you want, I'll go ahead and copy the equation over. But you're going to eventually need to know <coughs> the equation. So there's your equation. That's the hypotenuse, or that's the Pythagorean theorem. How about you try to f plug this in and, and work it out? And then we'll answer your questions in a moment. India, can you tell me what you substituted into the equation? Um, a squared is a b squared is a b. Mm -hmm. B squared is. So you said a is okay, and what was b? B is um, is fifteen inches. So b equals fifteen inches, and what's c? Um, six. It's just this unknown c hypotenuse, right? So we're gonna take this equation, and we're going to replace it with the values that you gave us. And you're correct. So instead of A, we're going to use 8 inches. Okay, And then instead of B, we're going to use 15 inches. And all that's going to be raised to the second power. Scrunch all this in here. Okay. All right. 
So now we need to simplify this. So let's go ahead and simplify this and then solve for c. So what's, what's 8 inches to the second power? Now remember, it's 8 inches to the second power. So it's 8 inches, to eight inches times 8 inches. So the 8 times the 8, you're right, is 64. But what's the inch times the inch? So don't forget the units. So 64 inches squared. And then we got to add that to the square of 15 inches. 225 inches squared. And all that equals c squared. OK, now, now we're in solve the equation. So we've simplified it. Uh, we need to start solving the equations. Is there anything else I could simplify? Can I combine anything else before I start isolating my variable? Bokar. Very good. 64 inches squared and 225 inches squared. Those are like terms. We can add them, right? Let's go ahead and add them. So what happens when you add 64 inches squared and 225 inches squared? 289 inches squared. And all that equals c squared. Have we finished? Have we solved c? No, we found c squared. Now, this is why I've been covering what I've been covering with you, because we have a problem here where we have something raised to the second power. But I don't want something raised to the second power. So do you guys know how to get rid of something raised to the second power so we get rid of the exponent of 2? We're going to do what? What's the name of that thing we're going to do to it? Think about the warm up. We're going to use the square root. Okay, So I need to take the square root of some things. So square root of both sides, I can't just do it to one side. If we solve an equation, we have to do the same thing to both sides so it's balanced, right? OK. So let's do the right side of this equation. That's the easy part. What am I left with? Nice. I'm left with just c. Now the left-hand side, I got 289 inches squared. Well, inches squared, that's squared, so that can come out. So in, that can come out as inches. But 289, what do we know about 289? Is it a perfect square? Are you sure? Yes. It is. Figure it out. Who's got it? I can say 17 squared, inches squared. And what that gives me back is 17 inches is the length of C. So hopefully now you understand why I've been trying to get you guys to think about it this way. OK? Does that make sense? Yep. So what happens if like, you don't know if it's a perfect square? No, remember the strategy we talked about with estimating? finding benchmarks that are perfect squares around it, we can estimate it that way. And I, I'm going to do one review of that today. Okay. Um, any questions about this? Okay. Let's go ahead. Now, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of a leg of a right triangle. So now, in the last couple problems, we found the hypotenuse. Now, we're not trying to find the hypotenuse. What's missing here? One of the legs, right? So here's the, here's the thing with Pythagorean theorem. If you know two of the three legs, you can find out the third using Pythagorean theorem. That's, we we kind of use the same idea to solve for a missing angle, right? If we knew three of the interior angles, right? The interior angles add up to be 180. We could solve for the third missing one. Well, now we're not finding angles. We're finding the length of a side. Pythagorean theorem only works with right triangles. Got it? Don't forget that. That's another area. I've, I've seen kids try to use Pythagorean theorem on triangles that weren't even right triangles. It has to be a right triangle for you to use, for you to use Pythag Pythagorean theorem.
be pretty bad if that fell. <laughs> you could you could upload it to YouTube. You get a lot of hits. You could put the hit. Math teacher gets hit by. Everybody that hates math will go look at it. How do we set this up? Justin, go and walk me through it. Right, so um, using what we know about the Pythagorean theorem, you identified the legs, and that was half the battle. And then we substituted into there the values from the triangle that we have. We don't know A. We do know B. B is equal to 8 meters. Throw that in there. Okay. And do we know C? Actually, we hold on. We messed up on something. It's not 8. Yeah, it is 8. What's C? 10. Okay, and I should have put something around that. Okay, now let's go ahead and simplify this. What do we have when we simplify this? What's 8m squared going to become? Becomes 64 meters squared. And then that's going to equal whatever the hypotenuse squared is. What's the hypotenuse squared? 100 m squared. Now we got we to gotta isolate my variable. There's nothing else to simplify. We need to start isolating my variable. So now we're in like working backwards, trying to get A by itself. Yep, say it again, Jose. What am I going to subtract? Right, we're going to subtract from both sides 64 meters squared. Okay? And I don't need you to show what this is. You just have to understand what happens to a positive 64 meters squared minus 64 meters squared zero. becomes zero. So what does that leave with me on the left-hand side of the equation? A squared, right. And then that equals, well, what's 100 meters squared minus 64 meters squared? That's going to give me 36. What, 36 what? 36 meters. meters squared. Now we're really close to answering our question. Is that the answer, though? We have one more step. What's the step? I need to find the square root, because I got to find A. I don't want to find a squared. Now, can I rewrite? Um, so if we take the square root of both sides, uh, can I rewrite 36 with an exponent of 2? What can I rewrite it as? 6 squared. So, so I now have 6 squared, meters squared, and I'm going to throw that all underneath square root. And then, well, what does that simplify to? What's, what's a to the squared square root going to become? Just a. And what's 6 squared meters squared square root of that? 6 meters. OK. They get more complicated than this. Throughout the morning, I saw a lot of students trying to work this out without putting it into the equation. And 
that's fine. That works for really easy problems. But suppose one of your sides was like x minus 2. Do you guys understand? So they're not always going to be nice integer lengths. So to start out with the equation, here's the problem I want you to work out. You will have an integer solution. Miles, M-I, miles. When you're done, put your pencils down, and I wouldn't mind a volunteer to walk us through this. Still a few people writing, but is there anybody finished? Bokar, do you mind walking us through this? So wait, what are we what are we replacing for A? Okay, so that's what A squared is, but A is just going to be seven miles. Okay, we don't know what B is. Here's B, and the last value they gave me was C, which is the hypotenuse, okay, that's 25. All right, so we're going to replace 25 miles for C. Okay, now 
what you said is you simplified from this step. So what is it going to be? Right, so 7 miles, quantity raised to the second power, is 49 miles squared. Okay, And we don't know what b is, so we just leave that b squared. And then what about c squared? What is c squared? Very good. 625 miles squared. Now we need to start simplifying things so we can isolate my variable. We need to isolate my variable. Well, what are we subtracting? Very good. So if you don't have a sign in front of something, it's a positive. And we need to subtract 49 miles squared from both sides of the equation. So over here, and then minus 49 miles squared. Okay, And then we see on the left-hand side, 49 miles squared and minus 49 miles squared. What happens to those things? They become 0. They cancel, right? And so then I'm left with b squared equals, well, what's 625 miles squared minus 49 miles squared? It's 576 miles squared. So very good. Almost done. Now what? Yep, we're going to take the square root. But can I rewrite? Is this a perfect square? Nice. What is it a perfect square of? Very good. It is the square of 24 to the second power. And so we're going to take the square root of both sides. And what happens to b squared, square root of b squared? Well, what's this going to become on the left-hand side of the equation? What is this? Ignore everything else. No, no, it's not b to the second power anymore, because I'm taking the square root of b to the second power. What's the square root of b to the second power? If that wasn't there, what would this be? Miriam, could you help him out? This just becomes b. Got it? This over here simplifies to become what? 24 miles. OK? All right. Um, let's just let's set this problem up. We're a little short on time, so I want you guys to understand the setup. And then you guys can verify on your own how to do this. But I'm going to read the problem to you. So we're going to solve an, a problem by applying the Pythagorean theorem. So this is a real world problem. You have a water slide that starts 7 meters above the water and extends 11 meters horizontally. What is the length of the slide to the nearest tenth of a meter? OK, so the height. Good afternoon, CPA students and staff. Will those 6th and 8th graders who were just in the library for math are Please report back to the library. Thank you. Now, when they talk about the horizontal distance, are they talking about the, the distance of the slide? Think about the horizon. When you see the sun setting on the horizon, we're talking about the sideways length, right? So let's go ahead and draw this. You're not always going to have a picture to go with these type of problems. You have to know how to set them up. OK? And the question is, what's the length of the slide? So this would be my slide. And here's the water that you're going to be going into. Here's one of you excited about being in the water. OK, so now we need to figure out, how do we set this problem up? Ray, go ahead. Um, so first, the graph, uh, sorry, the hypotenuse is mm -hmm. going to be the green side. Right, so this is the hypotenuse. The length of the slide is going to be the hypotenuse. And we've been using C 
for hypotenuse. So we'll go ahead and stick with that. So we'll call the length of the slide C. OK? Right, so we're going to use a to the second power and b to the second power. Very good. Um, okay, and then all that equals c to the second power. Okay, let's go and replace into the Pythagorean theorem our values. Right, so we got six meters for a. That's still squared plus. 11 meters, and that's all squared also. And that's going to equal the length of the slide that we don't know, but we're trying to calculate. OK? So let's go ahead and simplify this. <coughs> six meters to the second pass, six meters quantity squared, what is that? 36 meters squared. Okay, and then what's 11 meters squared going to be? 121 meters squared. So we get all that is equal to c squared. All right, um, I need to simplify this some more. Let's go ahead and simplify this. What do we get? Again, so this becomes 157 meters squared. All that equals c squared. Okay, um, how do we go about solving this? Um, this is not a perfect square, right? Do you guys remember what we did with benchmarks and using perfect squares and estimating? So this is some review. This is when I taught lesson five. I want to review that with you really quickly. What whole, what perfect squares is this nearby? You said 12 and 13? Well, 12 is what? OK. So on the number line, 12 is the same as the square root of 144. And then you said 13. What's 13 to the second power? That's the square root of 169 is equivalent to 13. And what's halfway between 12 and 13? is 12.5. And now we need to see on which side does that sit. Well, what's 12.5 to the second power? So we can compare square roots. You said it's 156? 156 and 25 hundredths, so the square root. OK, so now we're going to take the square root of both sides so we can estimate what c is, right? Well. 157 is, you know what, that's really, really close to 12.5, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say a good estimate would be just 12.5, right? Like that's super close to 156.25, OK? So I would say that a good estimate would be 156, 12 and a half meters equals C. That is my answer. OK? Almost done. The side opposite the right angle in a triangle is called the hypotenuse. If the longer leg. If the longer leg of the triangle at the right is increased by 2, will the length of t increase by 2? t is what side? Hypotenuse. So here's what it's saying. Pythagorean theorem tells us this triangle, 10 squared plus 5 squared equals t squared, right? Now, if we increase the long leg by 2, then what's happening is you have 12 squared plus 5 squared equals 
let's say w squared. And then we're trying to figure out this. Is w squared, or excuse me, we're trying to figure out is w equal to t plus 2. I'm going to let you guys verify that, but that's kind of the thinking behind it. Okay. Let's go ahead, do one more problem. I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and do let's do let's do this one in the middle. They want us to estimate to the nearest tenth for the hypotenuse, okay? They're giving us two legs. So the two length of two the length of two legs of a right triangle are given. Find the length of the hypotenuse to the nearest tenth. Um, I'm not going to do all these because we're short on time. I'm going to do the one in the middle. So how would we set this problem up? We need to set up Pythagorean theorem. So what are we going to set up? What's the equation going to look like? Very good. So we got 4 to the second power plus what? Plus 3 to the second power. Good. And then what? equals what? C. Equals C that we don't know. C and it's C to the second power. So that's the setup. Let's go ahead and simplify this and solve for C. Uh, 4 squared is the same as what? 16. 3 squared is 9. This is an easy one. I should have picked another one. And then that equals C squared. What's 16 plus 9? 25. And 25 equals c squared. So how do we solve that? We take the square root of both sides. And then you probably know that one mentally, right? You get c equals 5 inches. All right. OK, so I did one example on estimation just so you guys had that to review. Be ready. Make sure you know how to identify irrational and rational numbers. Do you guys remember what an irrational number is? Yeah. It's a number we can write as a fraction. Um, and then what else? There's another example. It can be a non-terminating repeating decimal. An irrational number is non-terminating, does not repeat. Hello, Mr. Hadley speaking. 